Munkester Castle itself is uh, reputedly built on Roman foundations and obviously there's a definite Roman heritage here with Ravenglass originally being a Roman port. I believe Agricola sailed in in 79 AD with the Roman fleet and uh, they used it as a jumping off point for the north of England. So we're on the edge of empire. But my frustration is for years and years we know we've been sitting on great archaeology um, and it's really relatively untouched. We have the highest freestanding Roman walls in the north of England with the bathhouse. It's a very special place down there when, you, when you're on your own amongst those walls. It's almost a mystical place. It's almost like unwrapping your Christmas presents. You know, what will be in that box? What will be under that soil? The Lake District National Park are involved because they obviously want to make sure that the site's managed and protected for the future. And the only way you can do that is if you've got a handle on what you know is actually there. York Archaeological Trust are running the excavation, so they'll be on site and they will be talking to the volunteers each day about how to go about it. The main technique they'll learn is to carry out archaeological excavation, and that includes not just digging but also the recording so that there'll be an archive of what they dug. I'm really, really looking forward to it. It's, you know, all the bits are coming together now and I'm really pleased to say that we'll be on site tomorrow. As well as the excavations, we've got the geophysical survey. That's the other big fieldwork uh, element that we're doing at the minute. There's the uh, magnetometer, which looks at uh, magnetic anomalies in the ground. So things like stone walls there will have a, a big impact compared to the natural subsoil background. Uh, the resistivity instrument looks at slight changes in the, in the kind of electrical conductivity of the ground. And that's better for finding more subtle features such as pits and uh, maybe burials even. And that has massive implications for understanding the size of this settlement and what it was being used for. Not too many people are aware of the environmental side of archaeology but um, it's, it's a good insight and most people are surprised at, at what we do. But it is one of the most important pieces of the jigsaw because we're painting a broader picture of the landscape uh, around the site and then how people were living, what their diets were like, all sorts of things. We've got a much bigger picture of the landscape. We knew where the fort was, we knew where the bathhouse was, but we've never ever known where the Vicus was. So we wanted to know where the civilians were who backed up the soldiers in the fort. Uh, and we asked merely for £6,000. And they said, oh, well, we think you ought to you know, bid for a bit more money. And Brian and I thought, oh, another couple of thousand, that'd be quite nice. Uh, and they said, no, you want, it ought to be a phase one bid which is 90 to 200,000, it sort of ranges, doesn't it? it, it it's a huge <laughs> amount of money. No way we could have dealt with 90,000. We just hadn't got the facilities. But we were fortunate that the Lake District National Park Archaeology Department stepped in and said, we'll do it for you. Oh, it's been a fantastic success with the community. We couldn't have done it without the 100 or so people who've worked on the project. We've uh, found some evidence for Roman occupation in all three trenches. We've had a really good time and I'm really looking forward to being here next year. To know that you're walking where people lived and worked 2,000 years ago, you know, we know they're elegant people, we know they were cultured. But to see their culture here is something special. We'll be talking out on it and dining out on it for the next year.